Hey, so just letting you know, the audio quality on this video is not going to be very good. If you watched my Amari Cooper video, you know exactly why, but I'll explain it real quick here. I plugged in my uh, webcam. I had it plugged out. I plugged it back in. And for whatever reason, that shifted the microphone from my actual good microphone onto my webcam mic. I didn't notice it. It's very frustrating, but, you know, uh, I'm not going to re-record the entire video again. The audio quality is poor, but uh, this will be the last time it happens. So, anyways, I hope you guys still enjoy the video, despite the audio not sounding particularly great. So, Gerald McCoy is now a Dallas Cowboy. It's pretty interesting, you know, the longtime Tampa Bay Buccaneer. It looked like he was kind of on his last legs when he was sort of at the tail end of his Tampa Bay career. And then he goes over to Carolina and actually played very well. It was surprising to see how well he played. He had a very good season, I thought, despite sort of the the older age that he's currently at. I mean, he just turned 32, so it's not like he's ancient by any means. But, you know, it's probably fair to say he's not the dominant player he once was. However, he still has some, some very real talent, I think. And let's just show an example. This is for when he was actually playing against Tampa Bay, and he's going to be going up one-on-one -on -one against Tampa Bay's left guard, Ali Marpet. So, you know, pretty big matchup right off the bat. And you look at McCoy, and what he's going to do is first try to get his left arm and swipe away at Marpet's right arm, see if he can get in between the guard and the tackle. That's what he's trying to do right here. But, you know, it's tough. I mean, Marpet does have good footwork. As you see, he's able to relatively get further back. So at this point, you know, McCoy definitely doesn't have an easy window to try to get through and get to Winston by any means. But McCoy is so strong. Watch how he's able to just completely power through. He gets to Jameis and gets the sack just like that. Just a, a really good play by McCoy, I thought, to just power through and get the sack. It shows his strength more than anything. That's kind of what McCoy can bring to the table is he's just a big, strong guy. Does he have the footwork he once had? I don't think so. Is he as strong as he once was? I don't think so. But he's still really strong, and, you know, he still is a very talented player, and he still has good footwork. I mean, he definitely has not fallen off any cliffs whatsoever. He's still a very, very talented player. Like, take a look at this play. That's where he is on the screen, and what Carolina is going to do here is they're going to have a twist. So, basically, those two players run like that. McCoy, who is on the inside, he's going to run to the outside of the tackle. The edge rusher, he runs closer to the inside in between a guard and a setter. The idea is it gets Tampa Bay players out of position, like watch, as you see, right when the ball is snapped. You look at McCoy, and he's able to be in a pretty solid position right here. He's up against the tackle, and he has good hand placement right here, where he can just decide to try to overpower him. Now, a good tackle could still be okay in this situation. I mean, this is not Tampa Bay's starting tackle, but... Either way, it's not the end of the world. I mean, there is some separation in between McCoy and Winston right here, but McCoy is just so strong. Watch how he's able to just overpower, get off the block, and get to Winston for a sack. And quite frankly, that sack could not have felt good from Jameis Winston's perspective. Just having a 300-pound guy completely fall on your head, it looked like. I mean, that's a, that's a tough one, but... You know, never mind that, just McCoy being able to overpower guys, he's able to run around. He's really actually very good when you use a, him with a twist. I think him him being able to execute a twist very well has some real positive value, and I think that Dallas could probably use that a good amount, I think. Like, this play is another example. It's, again, going to be a twist, and right after the ball is snapped, again, you notice a very similar situation. Now he's in a position where he's going up against a tackle, but again, he's kind of in that position where he can just try to overpower right here. He doesn't have to worry about using footwork too much. And also, the other Carolina player is in a pretty good situation where he can try to quickly get to Rodgers. So there's that benefit as well. But obviously, this is a video about McCoy, so I wanted to break down his perspective of it. Watch how he is able to just push that Green Bay tackle so much further back. And if Rodgers doesn't get rid of that ball quickly, that's a sack and a safety. I mean, Rodgers... He was obviously very cautious of not getting sacked right there. You don't want to give up the safety. But, you know, maybe if this is in the middle of the field, that results in a sack. And either way, it was still a good play because it forced Rodgers to have to get rid of the ball quicker than he probably would have liked. So, you know, him with Brian Burns last season definitely had a lot of fun doing those twists with Burns' speed. But 
I can definitely see Dallas doing the same thing. And, you know, McCoy, him being able to be a, a defensive tackle who can help out in the passing game has a lot of real value, I think. But, of course, as we all know, that is not what McCoy is known for. McCoy is not the kind of guy who you think about, oh, right, great at rushing the passer. Now, he can't do that. He has had some some pretty solid seasons, especially in his prime at rushing the passer. I mean, that's absolutely something he does bring to the table. In fact, after his first two seasons in the league, he's had five sacks in every season he's played in, at least five sacks. So from 2012 to 2019, He's had five or more sacks, and the most of which was in 2013, where he had nine and a half. So, as an interior lineman who specializes as a run defender, that's obviously a, a huge positive impact to have. But let's talk about that run defense and what he can bring to the table with the run defense, because I do think that that's something that Dallas has neglected in the past, and I, I like how they're not neglecting it this time. One thing McCoy has pretty much always been great at, but he still is great at now, is his first step. The guy gets off so quickly. I mean, it's like he moves as quickly as the ball that's getting snapped and moves backwards. It's insane sometimes where it'll look like he's off sides on some plays, but he's not. He's just that quick. And this play is a good example of it where what's going to happen is that they're going to have a tackle try to move over and block McCoy. So it's going to look like that. You know, that's where McCoy is. They have the tackle run over and he's going to be the one who tries to block him. But obviously, typically, it would be a guard who would block him because that would just make more sense. The guard is right lined up with him. But they want to use the tackle to do this so that way they can have a guard double team another interior lineman and allow it to be a very easy run for a touchdown here. So it's all going to come down to, can a tackle get in position to block McCoy quick enough? And that answer is going to be absolutely not. McCoy just shoots through that gap and just instantly is able to make a tackle. Just a tremendous play by him, but that's what he can do, is move that quickly. I mean, really. I'm not saying he can do that, like, every single play, but, you know, if you do try to get creative at the line in a way to block McCoy, it can have some real negative impacts, and, you know, that's a great example of it. There's plenty of examples of him doing things like that. He can make those splash plays in the running game, which is really huge and I do think will help the Dallas Cowboys out a lot. I mean, this team wasn't necessarily atrocious in run defense, but they definitely have some room to improve. I mean, you know, according to DVOA, their run defense was 15th in the NFL, so it was very mediocre. And when you think about the, the great talent they have in the linebacker position, you do kind of wonder, well, why have they struggled so much in the running game? And to me, the clear reason for it is their lack of defensive tackles. Adding McCoy could help them out a lot. And, you know, that's how you can go from a mediocre run defense, and honestly, a mediocre team, to a playoff team, is having something like that. I think it can have some huge positive impacts. And going back to that first step, uh, you know, here's another example. I think this example will be something that honestly will be more likely to happen throughout a game and throughout a season where he's going to, again, you're going to get a little bit creative here because it's going to be a run to the right, but they have their left guard who's going to be blocking McCoy. Typically, when he's on, uh, right, lined up right there, you would have your center do this, but again, they want to move their center up to block a linebacker, so what they're going to do is they're going to try to see if they can get their guard to move over and block him. And as you see, McCoy, on that first step, is able to get in a much better position where you sometimes see a guard easily be able to move over and just take that defensive tackle out of the way. You can't really do that for McCoy and he's able to continue to fight over and he gets this tackle. They don't gain many yards. Whereas had he not had that first step, that could have gone for a lot more yards. It really could have. So again, that's what McCoy can do. He has a great first step, great run defender, and also really does have some positive impacts in the passing game in rushing the passer, not just with him being able to win his own one-on-one -on -one matchups and getting sacks and getting pressures that way, but also he's he's great on those twists. He's great at setting things up. You still have to fear him on those twists. He can be the tackle, not just the guard. So him being able to run twist, you know, that really works out very well. And it's something that he can really, uh, I think he could really do a great job with in Dallas. And they could have... A, a potentially a, a great defensive line, but we'll have to see because, I mean, let's be real, 
every year we see a team piece together some of these defensive linemen, put them together, but then it just doesn't work out. And he is 32, so there is an inherent risk of getting him. But I like this move. I think he will have a positive impact. I think that he's also one of those guys who he's he just there's not many guys like this, but he's one of them who's just completely squeaky clean. Like there's almost nothing bad you can really say about him. Reminds me a bit of Jason Witten, where it's like you know just a great locker room guy. I would think, although he has never made the playoffs before for some weird reason. So maybe Dallas can help uh, him finally get that monkey off his back. But it should be interesting to see. I like this move. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.